नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल स्टडी लीस्ट स्क्वायर क्लासिफिकेशन एज अ वे ऑफ एस्टिमेटिंग पैरामीटर्स ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेंट फंक्शंस लीस्ट स्क्वायर क्लासिफिकेशन एडॉप्ट्स लीनियर रिग्रेशन फॉर क्लासिफिकेशन इट यूजेस लीस्ट स्क्वायर एरर एज अ लॉस फंक्शन ऑल ऑफ यू आर फैमिलियर विथ लीस्ट स्क्वायर एरर बिकॉज वी हैव स्टडीड दिस in the context of linear regression the least square error at i turning point is calculated as the difference the square of difference between the actual label and the predicted label y y superscript i is the actual label and w transpose x superscript i gives us the predicted label so we subtract the predicted label from the actual label and square of the difference to get the error at i turning point the total loss or the total error is the sum of square of errors between the actual and predicted labels at each turning point so we denote actual loss with jw and jw is essentially sum of error at each of the turning point and there are n turning points we can write this in a vectorized form as e transpose e and error is denoted or error is calculated as the difference between the actual label vector minus the predicted label vector we take the transpose of this difference and multiply it with itself this particular loss or the error is dependent on the value of w as we change the value of w we get a new model and new model would result in different predictions and hence it affects the error at each turning point in a different way hence the the loss or the error is dependent or is a function of the weight vector now that we have the loss we have a concrete definition of the loss let's use the optimization procedure to minimize the loss and by minimizing the loss the weight vector that results into the minimum loss is the is the weight vector of our interest so we can calculate or we can minimize the loss uh, with two different ways one is a normal equation and second is the gradient descent in normal equation and also in gradient descent we first calculate the derivative of the loss function with respect to the weight vector i request you to refer to the linear regression material for the detailed derivation of of this uh, of this derivation of of this derivative of loss function with respect to the weight vector so the derivative of the loss with respect to the weight vector is given as 2 times x transpose xw minus x transpose y so we set this particular derivative to 0 and we solve for w in normal equation so when we set this to 0 and perform some algebraic manipulation we get the value of w as x transpose x inverse x transpose y whenever x transpose x is not a full rank matrix we calculate the pseudo inverse which is x transpose x inverse x transpose in order to calculate the value the or the value of the weight vector which results into the the minimum loss and this is the weight vector that is of our interest or this is the weight vector that results into the the least square error and this becomes the weight vector uh, which will be used uh, in our model we can also calculate weight vector with gradient descent and as you know gradient descent is an iterative optimization procedure that derives that that updates the weight vector iteration after iteration to obtain the optimal weight vector so in case of gradient descent the central computation is a weight update rule the weight update rule is again based on the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the weight vector which we calculated in the previous slide 
So the, the new value of the weight is set to the old value of the weight minus alpha times the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weight vector. And as you know, alpha is the learning rate. And learning rate decides how fast we move from the old value to the new value. The large value of alpha would result in faster update of the old value to the new value, but it, it might have problems in, in, in convergence. Whereas the small values of alpha would lead to smaller changes in the weight vector and it might take us longer to reach to the optimal point. And the moderate value of alpha would uh, make sure that we move uh, fairly quickly from one uh, point to the other and reach the optimal point faster. So the, so the new value of the weight vector is set to the old value minus alpha times the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weight vector. And this, this weight update tool is implemented in gradient descent algorithm and which we will see uh, in the collab demonstration. Let's implement a couple of functions for least square classifications from scratch and uh, look at the demo on some sample data set. We implement two functions. One is for the optimization through normal equation and second is the inference function. The normal equation is implemented with a fit method that takes two argument, one is a feature matrix X and a label vector Y. We calculate the pseudo inverse of the feature matrix and perform matrix multiplication between the pseudo inverse and the label vector to obtain the optimal value of the weight vector. In case of inference, we define a predict function that again takes two argument. First is the feature matrix and the weight vector. So here there are more than one examples that we can send to the feature matrix of shape n cross m where n is the number of examples and m is the number of features. We calculate an intermediate quantity z by performing matrix multiplication between the feature matrix and the weight vector. And then what we do is if the value of z is greater than or equal to 0, we assign class 1, otherwise we assign class 0. And this is how we uh, perform the inference task uh, in least square classification. So let's say this is a sample training data set where there are the points from two classes. The orange ones are the points from class 1 and the blue ones are the points from class 0. There are two features x1 and x2. The blue points are from class 0 and the orange points are from class 1. And when we learn uh, the optimal decision boundary or the weight vector through least square classification, we get the following decision boundary. And you can see that this decision boundary separates two classes clearly. So we have the points from class 1 on one side of the decision boundary and the points of class 0 on the other side of the decision boundary. So we'll implement, we'll implement the least square classification on a sample data set in a collab which is topic of our next video.